test test. This is my, this is part two of my talk about Dr. Norman Robland, my favourite gut, gut dysbiosis theorist, who I just discovered like two, two or three weeks ago. Although I was coming to the same conclusion myself before I'd heard his thing. <clears throat> yeah, my stream just stopped for some reason. I'm hoping this is working okay. Yeah, I'm I'll keep going now. Yeah. So large intestine and just hope it all worked. Yeah, the, these others are the ones that people think when the dysbiosis doctors, mainstream doctors and that. You know, this is the only thing they'll say, take this thing serious when it, obviously the person might die or something. Uh, yeah, I mean, they've got something that can be clostridium uh, difficulty or whatever. But actually, most people who have got dysbiosis, it's probably a very small amount that have got these sort of problems. And that includes parasites. I suppose this could say problems are acute and obvious. Although you can have single cell ones like blastocystis hominis. I was positive in a stool test for that, but I don't know if it was accurate, you know. And I don't know what it, if that's just commensal parasite or if it's, uh, you know, does some feel it may do you damage. But um, because I'm on this new theory, I'm not bothered anyway. But so we're talking maybe 98% cases, dysbiosis cases or the other type, where a doctor won't be interested in, basically. You know, that's when you have IBS or maybe diverticulitis or colitis or smell a bit, just a bit of discomfort, you know, these sort of things. Uh, nobody's interested at the moment. Yeah, and this is some clues that I think. Bloating equals gas. So if you get bloating, something's fermenting in your gut. So if you get a bloated gut, stomach all the time, if you get gas in your stomach all the time, even if you don't have wind or anything, and you may spot this, I've been told, say, in a colonoscopy, uh, I think the doctor said, or the surgeon, uh, you get a lot of gas in your large intestine, and that was after 12 hours after eating anything, you know? So that's the sort of thing we're, we're looking at, sort of clues. I actually think that the best Got fermentation test is an ultrasound and ab the abdomen ultrasound. I, I'm not seeing anybody agree with me on that yet, but that's what I think. Uh, or the next test would be the biolab got fermentation test, but biolab's closed down. They used to test for ethanol for candida and other alcohols for uh, for uh, bacteria, and it was a blood test. You had to get a blood tested after every 30 minutes for about two hours. Uh, that was a gold standard test, in my opinion. The breath test, no, I'm not so keen on, but it's all I've got, you know. If you're a serious case, it'll probably spot you. Yeah, and another clue is if you, if you feel ill by taking daily acidic things or daily uh, fermented things like uh, yogurt, yakult, because that's really high, highly concentrated, I think. Um, kefir, sauerkraut, um, apple cider vinegar because it's acidic. Because one of the worst things I ever took was hydrochloric acid. Um, and I took that because that's the main thing in your stomach acid, is hydrochloric acid. So I thought, well, maybe, maybe I've not enough acid there. Because a lot of people think that. But it was the opposite for me, really. I was... Uh, I'm too acidic. So really, probably an alkali diet would do me quite a bit of good, I think, as well. Because I'm probably too acidic all over. I know a lot of people don't believe in the alkaline diet, even uh, a lot of uh, non-mainstream enlightened, like uh, Dr. Eric Berg. Now, I feel that like he's starting to feel there might be something to it, but I mean, it doesn't take a lot to make yourself alkaline. I mean, what is it they use? Uh, it's a sort of it's something really calcium carbonate or something like that. It's something that you could you add to baking. Um, I mean, there's a few variations, but my my urine pH went right up after taking that. But I'm not sure about that either. I think this diet's even better because that alkaline diet it probably in an indirect way it might help with what. 
of dysbiosis, but it's not the root cause, I don't think. At least I don't think so. I think the root cause is a fermentation caused by bacteria, archaea, or, or a fungus. Uh, yeah, and Dr. Mark Hyman done a quote yesterday in one of his YouTube videos. He's got excellent YouTube videos. Um, yeah. And he's saying, his quote was, if you have bloating, you have gas, and there's something wrong with your diet. If you don't, stick to your diet. I mean, I don't think he's meaning that totally, but as a general rule, you know, as a, just to make a point, if you get bloating or something up, even if you don't feel there's something up with you, if you get too much gas in your gut, that's causing a lot of pressure. I mean, long term, maybe that's the cause of diverticulitis, you know, that's what I've been thinking recently. Maybe because that's where you get small pouches in your colon and stuff. I'm wondering maybe that's all the pressure from the gas, you know. But Dr. Mark Hyman's an interesting character because he uh, he works at the Cleveland Clinic. He didn't used to. Before then, he was, uh, I, think he, I think he is a real doctor, but he went non-mainstream. Uh, functional medicine type, and uh, he wasn't working in mainstream link, but uh, he was at some sort of conference with a, a I think it was a colon, colon expert from the Cleveland Clinic, you know, a mainstream guy. He was sitting next to him at uh, some conference meal or something, and the, the colon expert guy said that his, his niece, niece in her 30s was going to have it have to have her colon removed because of, uh, I don't know whether it was colitis or, you know, one of these sort of nasty things, uh, ulcerative colitis, I don't know, something like that. So don't, so Mark Cameron said to him, well, let me have a go because she's going to lose her colon anyway, so let me have a chance. And he sorted it out. So he saved her colon and he says colon. And the col colon guy, who was probably very mainstream, very into quack watch, believes in quack watch and that, um, who Dr. Mark Hyman's listed on, I think. Uh, he just probably couldn't believe that, but he got him into Cleveland Clinic for that alone. So the Cleveland Clinic are now got a functional medicine doctor, Dr. Mark Hyman. But I doubt you can get an appointment with him, you know. He maybe doesn't even see people now. Maybe, I don't know whether he runs a surgery and may have other doctors that see people, but it's going to be expensive as well. But that's what he said. All his videos are worth watching on YouTube. It is very YouTube friendly, uh, even friendlier than Dr. Norm. So, uh, on terms of YouTube and social media. Um, on in the next place. So, I'm just looking at the diets to talk about in this area. You know, if you've been in these forums, you'll know about these food maps, elemental diet, paleo, meat diet, strict carb diet. And I think you could take them as a sort of right, uh, triangle. Of house of strictness, an upside down triangle, I suppose. The strictest is the elemental diet, from what I've heard, and that's where you're taking simple sugars, amino acids, and fats, and some sort of fat. People complain that they, people suggest that they don't, they're not taking enough fats in those diets. So that's actually the sort of things that you get if people have something badly wrong with their gut, you know you'll get something from one of the main manufacturers. A, a simple, very simple. It's a liquid, liquid diet. Uh, they'll give to people who can't eat or whatever. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so that you could buy one of them if you wanted to do that. But I would just do it myself if I was doing it. You know, you can take glucose, dextrose, sugars. I don't know, I think it takes, it takes short chain fatty acids. I'm not sure, but... Uh, and the uh, amino acids rather than protein. And they're just trying to starve their bacteria, basically. So that's very strict. Yeah. Dr. Norm's diet's not like that, as strict as that. He's wanting to put the microbiome on a permanent diet. He doesn't want to totally, you know, do away with them totally. So that's what that diet's about. FODMAPS is quite a strict diet as well. Fructo, fructose, oligosaccharides disaccharides, monosaccharides, it's all sorts of sugars, quite complex. I'm sure some of them are car complex carbs. I've not looked it up enough myself. Paleo diet, 
I mean, that, that's a sign that sort of healthy diet to me. But that includes things like nuts and seeds and all that that I don't think would be good for fermentation potential. You know, that would be good if you were a healthy person. The meat diet, again, that's just a sort of cyborg diet, anti cyborg It's to just take away the things that bacteria and fungus and archaea might feed on, you know. So it sounds a sort of unhealthy diet, but I think I would rather that than the <coughs> someone else. And then the lean gotch goals, carb diet. So that's probably the same sort of idea, but I think Dr. Norm says it's not all five fermentable carbs or in hers or whatever. And then I think the Keynes diet, is that not something like that? It's a sort of keto diet. <coughs> is that not high protein, low carbs or whatever? I don't know. This is just to give you an idea. But I think Dr. Norm's is the best from what I've seen. <coughs> And this is sort of tests and people. So the obvious things you would do for this would be the cyber breath test. I would, I would, I would guess there may be a lot of false negatives in that, in my own opinion. But it's going to spot the serious ones in that. It's very hard to get access to that. You can get it as a consumer. <coughs> They'll send a sort of balloon thing out to you if they blow, in, blow into and send it back to the lab. Or you can use uh, by the food marble from the food marble, what did they call that again? There, it's got the air, air two device or something. AI, AIRE two for hydrogen and methane. And you can use your phone then with the device. Uh, it's got a good app that you use. It's about, I think it's about £160 at the moment. Wow. It's on sale quite a lot, so I would buy it on a sale. <clears throat> to me, the best test is an ultrasound abdomen. Because I'm presuming that spots gas in your gut anywhere, you know, small intestine, large intestine. So I think they'd advise you to fast for those things. So I would guess mostly it would show up large intestine overgrowth or large intestine gas, basically. I would suggest a D-lactic acid test for the... Uh, because I think a lot of people are on a, quote, healthy diet, taking probiotics prebiotics, um, what's the other ones, kefir, sauerkraut, you know, fermented foods, giving themselves lactic, delactic acid acidosis or other types of acid. Just But delactic is probably the one that's the hardest to metabolise. So I would test for that as well if you could. Another sort of vague test are cryptopyrroles, endocrines, just to look for general dysbiosis. But I had a test, you know, the BioLab cut fermentation test was ideal, but you had to go to the lab for it. And bio, BioLab shut down anyway, so that test for ethanol. It reckons that candida is the only thing that produces ethanol. Or fungus is the only thing that produces ethanol in a human gut. So that's what they used. Their test, it was about a thousand times less than the... <clears throat> Than a driving test fail, you know. So you can't spot it on a on a alcohol breath test because it, it would need to be a thousand times more sensitive to spot it. That's their opinion, and I agree with them. You know, a lot won't agree with them. You know, so that's the other things. And then people, like I mentioned, Doctor Mark Pimentel of the University of California, Los Angeles. He's been doing this about 20, 25 years. Small intestine bacterial overgrowth. He's a sort of reference point on cyber mainly, and emo now, because he suggested that. People believe it when he says it, basically. Because uh, he does, his lab is sort of designed like a mainstream thing, maybe where it takes him years and years to come up with a paper and stuff, you know. Uh, and uh, a lot of the papers are pretty subjective, really. Or, I mean, uh, but not just his, in general, mainstream medicine a lot. You know, it's like one lab will be saying fats are good for you, another lab will be saying fats are bad for you, eggs are good for you, eggs are not good for you, you know. This is, they all get paid anyway, so they all just go down their uh, base rabbit holes and that's them, you know. It's not like genetics because that's sort of like arithmetic and maths. 
No, that was pretty simple for them. But when they've got to use theories, subjective theories, like Dr. Norm came up with this theory, uh, probably if he didn't have his uh, acid reflux, he wouldn't have come up with a theory, you know? And if people mention stuff to him, maybe he would have had his, uh, his mainstream mainstream hat on and just think, ah, there's nothing, there'll be no connection, you know? No. So, yeah, and chronic fatigue syndromes is another thing I would think about in these sort of areas. So that's all my, that's it really. I'll just leave it, and there's the five sugars. This is basically <clears> the <throat> main point. Lactose, fructose, resistant starch, fiber, sugar alcohols. That sugar alcohols is really annoying because I, I used to take uh, sugar-free fizzy drinks all the time during the day. It turns out that I was really taking a prebiotic probably because of the sweeteners in it and feeding my overgrowth, bacteria overgrowth. So that's just depressing really. Uh, I'd have probably been better just taking sugar as you drink because at least that sugar gets absorbed higher up. Uh, so that's what's so good about his, his uh, test, his theory. So, uh, yeah. Very interesting. There's his websites, uh, Digestive Health Institute. It looks a bit outdated to me, but I don't mind, you know. It's informative and it's navigable. Um, and he's got his app on Android and Apple. The Fast Tracked app, I think he calls it. Not a very catchy name, in my opinion. I would have called it, like, the, the Five Sugars Diet or the Low Fermentation Diet or something, you know. Uh, he's got a calculator on there that you can use to to find out uh, things, but I, I could only find out proteins, fats, and carbs. I couldn't, I couldn't find out, you know, <clears throat> individual things like rice, basmati rice. I couldn't find that in his calculator. Maybe I'm using it wrong. So I think that online calculator is a bit limited, but uh, he's got his app around about seven pound or 10 US dollars probably. Uh, yeah, it's just amazing. I mean, it does feel like a, a, a religious, a religious enlightenment for me. Do you know what I mean? It's like because I'm an atheist, so this is sort of like finding God or something, really. Doctor Norm Robillard, I think he's based. Well, he's American. I think he used to be East Coast. I don't know. He might still be there. I get a feeling he was in the West Coast, but I don't know. Uh, and he's, I think he does see cases, maybe not many cases now, yeah. maybe he gets others to do the cases for him, but it, it says on his website, well, people can't think me, but I don't know. I think he's more, he's wanting to spend all his time, you know, telling people on social media or, or in any way it can raise awareness, you know, conferences and stuff. Uh, so he's got the Digestive Health Institute. <clears throat> I mean, that video that I watched on Cyber, it, it really was it. I agree with it totally. Like I say, I would add probably large intestine fungal overgrowth and a large intestine dysbiosis mix, something like that. LIB, LIDM, something like that. And, and uh, LIFO. But in general, I think he's ahead of everybody else. And uh, I think he's definitely the person to say me. Okay, that's it. So thank you for uh, viewing, I think.